and I looking good for the NCAA tournament. So is Purdue. This is the Purdue lineup that has Anderson setting. We just talked about how she's kind of going under the radar for a good offensive team for Purdue. We'll talk a lot about Chloe Shacoin, of course, highlighted Hudson off the top with Colvin and Myers in between them in the middle. For the Illini, Raina Terry is where it starts and finishes for Illinois. Avery Hernandez, always important to see her production when she has 10 plus kills. The Illini usually win. They've won six in a row when Hernandez has gone off on that other pin opposite when Terry is in the backcourt. So Chris Thomas, he knows how competitive these matches are with Purdue. He spoke about that in Chicago earlier this season. Our, our matchup with Purdue, I, I think, the, I mean, I don't think I know by now that uh, their system of play is is uh, one that maybe matches up well with how we have a system of play, and so it just becomes a lot about ex execution. Uh, whatever team can usually execute those few points at the end of a set or go on a, a little run uh, is usually the one that's come out victorious. And as you mentioned, there's been a lot of a lot of, gone to four and five over the over the course of the year. That I think I can remember one or two that's gone to three, but uh, yeah, it's always been a battle with them. So it feels like we're due for one of those, Emily, uh, a true fight when Illinois and Purdue get together. It's like every time they get together, it's a true fight. And this is why we skimmed earlier on a Sunday, because we're going to go deep into the night. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Off we go. Start of what could be a late night from Holloway Gym. Mosier goes to the right to open it up to Laney Smith. And Hudson with the tip. Illinois ready to cover that up off of the block. Myers got the first contact, and Martinez Mundo keeps that alive. The libero for the Illini. And Purdue looking for their seventh win in a row, opening up with a long point. Ali Hornung underneath it. And the second ball goes over, but Hudson inside to block it. And already we've got a defensive battle happening on both sides. Incredible ups on Illinois side and Purdue side. Allie Horn on getting under it just to keep it alive and Purdue finding a way out of this one on a 50-50 play at the net. This so, is the intensity that you want in this kind of matchup. Well, you said the, the match could go late into the night. That first point yeah. might get us there alone. It's still going. And swap inside several times on the opening point that goes to Purdue. Lorena Terry, easy pick up for McAleer. Mosier out to the 10 foot line into the cross court. That was not touched off the hand of Smith. Point Purdue. The biggest key for Illinois coming into this matchup is to be as aggressive as possible and take really big swings. Because Purdue is so good in the backcourt at picking up easy off speeds, tips, and roll shots, they have to do a better job swinging at the high hands or just being aggressive and going for it. Chloe Shacoin with the service. It's Raina Terry in serve receive into the middle for the first time. It's Ashlyn Philpott for the Illini. Philpott has been so impressive this entire year. She's a true freshman starting at middle blocker, and Chris Thomas said he knew that she was getting special from the moment that she stepped in the gym. She isn't afraid of anything, and right away, she pretty much has the best connection with Mosher up front. It happened fast. It was four to five practices in that those two had a good connection. They knew they were going to play Philpott in that middle. Well, Mosher has to bump set to the back. Easy pick up for Shacoin. Hudson had the block to open up the night. Now Terry into the block of Anderson. Anderson's block is the best among setters in the Big Ten. She's not just a physical presence up front, but she gets up there and that handwork is so good. Watch her finish this block back into the court so she doesn't get tooled up front. It's not just any hitter she's going against, either. Yeah. It's one of the best ones in the Big Ten. A big stick for Anderson. Three of the first four to Purdue. Block shows up again. Hudson and Colvin getting outside. Purdue's block is one of their biggest assets. They have been outstanding up front defensively. Dave Shondell called this a must win with us before the match. Five matches to go. Purdue is number eight in the rankings, but number 20 in the RPI. So next five matches could determine, will they host, will they not in the NCAA tournament? It's gonna be a big question going up against this Illinois team that is not a ranked team, and they pretty much have almost all ranked teams to end the season of their last four. So this is kind of a must win for Purdue to stay in that top 16 seed, meaning they would host the first two rounds of the tournament. 
Yeah, not just a must win in the sense of that this is a team that they necessarily should beat, but Illinois, good resume as well, a 26 in the RPI. Martinez Mundo went over to get it, but Purdue goes up 5-2 in this opening set. Chris Thomas trying to get Illinois back there. He's closing in on 150 wins in his eight seasons at Illinois, which also includes a trip to the 2018 Final Four with Illinois. Moser unloads. The former hitter turns setter, puts it down. Amber Moser can do it all up front. She can hit, she can set. She's a great server on the back line as well, an incredible all-around setter. When this ball is tight, Purdue has to do a better job of identifying that because she's got a nasty lefty swing. When Diana Brown was the setter a couple years ago, she was out on the pin quite a bit. Moser was, now in her second full year as the setter. Colvin running the slide and scoring off hands. When Purdue can keep their middles involved, it's almost game over because their middles are so efficient up front. That, of course, depends on the pass. Purdue already doing a really good job handling tough serves coming their way from Illinois. A big key to this match. Illinois has the serving advantage. Purdue, Purdue not scoring a lot back here at the service line this year. But their block has come to play on a Sunday at Holloway. Purdue's block is unreal. The way that they're able to watch plays unfold on the other side and not only be in the right spot, but work so well together. Watch the two blockers. They go up at the same time. The timing is fantastic. And those hands always finish back into the court. Lizzie Carb has been a big part of the rotation on the right the last four matches. And she takes a swing after that block. Picked up by Terry. Moser on two and squeaked it by. Nikita shutting down Moser up front when she's trying to take it over is getting inside of that. So for Purdue, for Purdue, that means getting one step to the right on that block. So cheating a little bit more inside. Cheating a little bit more inside. Especially with the lefty, that swing normally goes in. Oh, goodness! <laughs> Pogo stick time for Colvin. Colvin trying to make a statement up front. I mean, watch the timing between Colvin and her setter, Anderson. It does not get much better than this. You can tell how much they practice it. And that arm is packing a punch. Ooh. What sound does a pogo stick make? I don't know. Colvin, that was way louder than a pogo stick. It did go straight up and down, though. My bad. <laughs> Stay over there tickling ivories. There. For my bears today. <laughs> Lady Smith for Illinois, 8-5, Purdue. Lady Smith, another one of the freshmen on Illinois' starting side that has pretty much started this entire year. She's been really impressive. Another really versatile player that they'll move around and kind of run on slide attacks as well, really fast behind the setter. And it just missed trickling over for Hornung. Trying to play the free ball. Back-to-back -back points so for the Illini. Close, but check out this effort from Eva Hudson chasing this one down. Runs into the scores table in the back. That's a player that's a fighter. She's going to get right back into it. The service is out. That stops the mini run for Illinois. Illinois closing out their, their toughest five-match stretch of the season with this one tonight. If they win, they would get through it three and two. And they would have a top 20 and a top 10 win with it as Laney Smith goes off speed. It's really important for this team that has had really tough stretch. And you look at the end of their schedule for the rest of the season. They see Rutgers, UCLA, Minnesota, and then Indiana. But look at this stretch. So many ranked teams. That's what makes the Big Ten so good. It feels like this happens every single week. You're seeing numbers next to the names. And wins to follow for Illinois. That five-set win against USC, one of the best wins on their resume. This would be their first top ten win if they can grab one on the road tonight. And it's Purdue up by three in this opening set. It's difficult to come into Holloway Gym, one of the loudest crowds in all of NCAA volleyball, not just the Big Ten. But this Illinois team, they've been trending upward. They've been getting better as the season has gone on. The offense has become more efficient. The defense has been more locked in, and they're just good right now. 
A lot of things going for him, including that home crowd that we mentioned off the top. Worth a couple of points per match for the Boilermakers. And Hudson down the line, but Moser right there. So Martinez Mundo has to step in and set up Terry. That is not a ball you want to be on the other side of. Rana Terry has one of the most powerful arms in the entire NCAA. Check out, even in slow motion, this ball is coming fast right at you. Hudson's lucky she got her hands up in time. Well, impressive that she she did get a hand on it. That yeah. thing was about to steam past her. Well, this is part of Illinois' deal, right? They're going to be aggressive at the service line. Leads to Chris Thomas's team scoring a lot, but can get a little error heavy. That's the trade-off. Long way to go for Martinez Mundo. Out of system, Terry with three blockers up there. Hudson scrambles back over to the pin and finishes in. That triple block was something we haven't seen Purdue use too much during the season. They used it a little bit against Sheridan Leverett, the UCLA outside because of how good she was, but Shondell telling us that Brandon Terry's just that good. We might have to put three blockers up in front of her to take it away. So from pin to pin, Eva Hudson, part of the trip. <laughs> I think you have to have a sock on the back if you're going to do that costume. It should be part of the costume. And out of the timeout taken by Illinois. They're chasing four points. Eva Hudson's had a good start, both blocking and swinging. Has that one over to the Illini with Terry. And Colvin on the pin again. Another missile. The connection between Anderson and Colvin took a little bit of a dip when conference play started, but they've been heating it back up. They've been getting in the gym to get extra reps on it. And you can tell this connection looks a lot better. Really great finish from Colvin, too. Getting a little extra juice today. Well, middle of the net, out to the pin. Multiple big swings. There's one from Terry that Shacoin misdirected. And hands on it for Phil Pot. Now a free chance for the Illini. And a lot happening to keep this point up, including Anderson underneath that coverage. And Hudson finds his team in the back. Purdue's defense has been fantastic tonight. They're up to four blocks, but they're getting so many good touches so they can transition that into good offense. And Eva Hudson so far, she hasn't had too many monster swings, but she's scoring in great ways, making it look easy. Well, that was kind of the, the medium pace on that ball for Hudson. That is not medium. There is nothing slow about that for Raina Terry. That sharp angle is exactly why Purdue's been putting up a triple block against her to take this shot away cutting inside of the block. So watch Terry. She'll see where the block is and still manages to go inside. One of the best blockers in the country in Raven Colvin. What did uh, Chris Thomas tell us it sounds like? Hammer meets nail exactly, when she swings. Exactly what it sounds like. Much more than a pogo stick. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you don't know what a pogo stick sounds like. <laughs> I asked you, what's it sound like? When's the last time you saw a pogo stick? Uh, fourth, fourth grade. Okay. <laughs> Here's Terry coming right down a hill with the kill out of the back row. And Illinois is going to ride Terry all night. She's already got 12 attempts. That's over double the next attacker. And this Illinois team completely relies on her. The key to shutting down Illinois is getting at least touches on Raina Terry. Because you can't stop her, but you got to try to slow her down. And we hope to contain her. Marina Terry, one of the best in the country. Off speed for Colvin, joust with Mosier, and punched the back. She coined with the hustle to run it down. Up top again, Colvin is denied. Carr. Mornung underneath. And Colvin pokes it out. And a missed opportunity by Colvin, but man, Purdue looks like they've got two liberos back there. Any time that Chloe Shaquin is back there, she just hustles her butt off. Any play you think is down, she manages to get back in the court. Uh, Hornung and Shaquin, so much range. That's why Purdue digs so many balls. As many as anybody in the Big Ten. And Eva Hudson puts as many balls down as anybody in the Big Ten. That's her third kill. There's Hudson showing off the arm that she's got, sometimes just as powerful as the opposition on the other side in Raina Terry. And 
Colvin and Hudson with three kills apiece to lead this match. Terry has three for the lineup. And that's another one for Terry. She's got the match high with three in this first set, or four, excuse me. Terry's being really aggressive, whether she's in the front court or the back row, she's taking big swings. That was the key for Illinois in this matchup. Do not throw in tips because Purdue transitions them so well. They have to continue to swing exactly like that. Four kills, three digs for Terry. There's Shacoin rising up. And action up at the net. That's a point for Purdue. Illinois has got to serve just a little bit tougher. Purdue's been in system at such a high clip that the offense has been so unpredictable and balanced. Anderson is getting every hitter involved. Illinois has to serve tougher. Well, those easy chances for Purdue to pass. It's gotten Colvin involved a lot out of the middle. It's Myers in there in this rotation with Colvin serving. Second ball from Colvin. Shacoin with the left. Hernandez got hands on it. Transitioning to a kill. What I liked about that tip was Illinois trying not to throw in too many easy shots, but that tip was still aggressive. The way that Hernandez threw it down, it still came with pace. Watch her transition out of this play. It doesn't go up before it goes down. She just shoves it down. Well, some tougher service shows up for the Illini in this go-round. Morning up for Shacoin and blocked. Hung up on the tape. Back-to-back -back points for the Illini with Smith up there. And the last three swings that Chloe Shaquin has had on the outside have just been way too tight for her to do anything with. Those out of system sets have to be off the net at least a little bit. They can't be right on top, especially for Shaquin, who only stands at 5'10. Anderson goes the other way this time. Big hammer, Lizzie Carr. Big hammer and the deception from Anderson on this ball. Watch, it looks like she's going to take this to her middle, but then at the last second, flings this back and no blocker in sight. Looking like hitting lines up front. That's what that deception gets you. Here's Terry and slams it down for the Illini. Yeah, you can't leave Terry one-on-one, -on -one, but this Illinois offense is tough to stop when they're in system. It doesn't happen too often because Illinois does struggle passing from time to time, but when they're in system and Terry gets that fast set, it oftentimes is one-on-one, -on -one and she wins that nine times out of ten. That almost felt like the open net we saw the other yeah. way when you get Terry one-on-one. -on -one. And that is down for Lourdes Myers. Been really impressed with Lourdes Myers during conference play. She's fourth in the Big Ten during league play, hitting 360, and that efficiency has skyrocketed. You can tell how hard Taylor Anderson and her middles, both of them, have been working on that connection. Well, Myers mostly known for her length and her defense. She's getting her involved early, and that's out for Smith. Who's Anderson continues to spread it around for Purdue. Anderson's doing a phenomenal job getting all of her attackers involved in the play. Well, Purdue has hit 310 as a team. And five different hitters have a kill in this first set. Back to the middle of Phil Pot. It's saved by Anderson. Mosier back to the middle for Phil Pot. Hudson puts another one away, her fourth of the night. These one-on-one -on -one situations are why Illinois has to be more aggressive. The tip that they threw was way too easy. Purdue could transition that very easily, sending a quick ball outside, big seam in the block. Timeout, Illinois, they've emptied the tank with timeouts in this first set, chasing six. The only losses for Purdue in the Big Ten are to the top three teams. They took Nebraska to five sets, and then they lost to Penn State and to Wisconsin, who are second and third ahead of them in the Big Ten standings. Raina Terry, they seal that off with Myers showing off that length. That's exactly what happens when Purdue knows that Raina Terry is getting the ball. They have time to set that block up, and those blockers working so well together to shut it down.
That spins on the tape for Terry. Cross court set, Hudson puts another one away, her fifth of the set. Hudson's mid-tempo shots have been phenomenal tonight. Not the ones where she's absolutely banging or her off speeds, but the ones right in between where she just sees a hole on the court and it's perfectly placing it there. They've gone to her a lot as they always do. 13 swings in this first set, leading to five kills. And Terry with the big approach. Block came up again. Same matchup, so she goes off speed, but McAleer is there. Does Hudson have a sixth? Martinez Mundo got there, but Hudson brings up set points. Hudson's just showing off her volleyball IQ at this point, mixing up her shots beautifully, completely taking control of this first set. Well, Hudson has been known to turn it on when she's got a lethal outside hitter opposite of her across the net. Done that in his first set tonight. On set point one, Anderson skews it out. Just missed. And that's such a good shot from Anderson, going for that back corner, just missing a little wide. She wanted that one. Kind of had that wry smile. <laughs> so close. Ooh. Set point two. Set for Myers, denied. Mid-air adjustment for Terry to block it. Yeah, that was an aggressive Terry block up front, identifying the tip early on, then leaving no chance for Purdue to play it back up. She hung up there for a while. Yeah. Like she was on a pogo stick. <laughs> back to Myers. Martinez Mundo. And the block ends it. Anderson. It ends with her, after all. ...to host in the opening weekend at the NCAA tournament. And the Illini with an RPI of 26, trying to come back in this match, and a good start at the service line with the ace for Avery Hernandez. And Purdue hit nearly 300 during set one. A lot of that was because the passing was so good. Illinois has to put in more service pressure here in the second. Well, that is their biggest strength and advantage in this match, is their serving. That's how they get ahead, but just for a moment in set two. A little sneak attack up front from Eva Hudson, looking like she's gonna swing on that ball at the last second. Sees it's not even over the net, but that physical presence scares off the Illini. I'd be scared. As I would be terrified. A net defender against yeah. Eva Hudson. Well, we gave you that matchup of, of Terry against Hudson. The player who usually has, the more, kill, has more kills usually wins the match. And Terry just tied Hudson. Both have six to start this one. I mean, it's been a slugfest up front between Terry and Hudson on the other side. Raina Terry is showing off that arm strength tonight. She's got a heavy arm, and she is not afraid to use it. And she's shown us tonight that she can put a hole in the floor. Well, that has been the direct correlation. Last year, they split the match. Terry and the Illini won. She had more kills, but they block Hudson this time. Shutting down or slowing down Hudson is going to be something that Illinois had to make that adjustment on here in the second set. This was a much better job getting those two blockers right next to each other in this out of system play. One of the few times that Hudson has been stopped in the opening set plus. Right back to her, double block is there. Philpot hands on. Philpot hands on again, but Colvin powered it past. Raven Colvin was a little quieter at the end of the first set, but she got going really early on for Purdue, especially key when the passing is that good. Anderson has to continue to establish that middle threat because that opens things up for players like Eva Hudson later on on the outside. That's a fun matchup in the middle because it's it's the vet Colvin who's been doing it at a high level for a while. Against Phil Pott in her first year, putting up big numbers for the Illini. Here's Lizzie Carr. Tool shot kill. How about the defense from Purdue? This is just one of the first times this season we're seeing the block put up three against an outside attacker. They're bringing in Hudson up front to defend Raina Terry. She's still getting it by, though, but Allie Hornug, phenomenal job defending outside of that to transition in the play. Well, Purdue has the edge as far as the backcourt defense overall, because they have a player like Chloe Shacoin back there. And Purdue leads the Big Ten. In digs per set. 
And this point carries on. Hornung up to the tape with Terry getting a piece of it. Moser falling away. That was touched, so it recycles. And between the block, Terry slides it through. Terry and all of Anoy right now to start off the second set is doing a better job of seeing the block where it's formed and going around it. Purdue had six blocks just in the first set alone, so Illinois had to make that adjustment. Okay, maybe it wasn't touched. That's what Dave Shondell will challenge. And a ball that slid along the tape. Original call was no touch. Purdue is challenging that there was a touch on the play. Oh, that, that contact, contact oh, Excuse me, we call the touch on Purdue. They are challenging that there was no touch. We knew what they meant. Yeah. And normally you don't challenge a ball if your player actually did touch it, but sometimes it's really tough to tell on the cameras. So we're actually looking for some potential net movement, it looks like. But I think it was, wasn't it the contact? Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Terry here. So did it hit the blocker? Did it hit the tape? I think that's what they'd be looking yeah. for, right? Because the up ref originally said that was touched, recycled. Yeah, it's tough to tell because the swing, I mean, based on that look. That looks like tape to me. It looks like tape to me as well. Yeah, that, Colvin didn't touch that. After the review, there was a touch. Illinois keeps the point. Really? Well, they have access to cameras that we don't have, so. Based on the looks we saw, you know, questionable, but based on the looks that they saw, obviously told a different story. I don't know, from that last look, it looked like it was way outside of Colvin, but all right. We play on. <laughs> So Purdue burns their first challenge. One left, unless we go to five. Car out of the middle. Barry picked it up, but outside the antenna. Purdue ties it up. Great side out for Purdue in that play. Just finding ways to get it done. A good pass from Hudson allows that middle attack to happen. Forcing that near overpass. Martinez Mundo retreating in serve receive. And she has the first ball here. Uh, Mosier for Philpot. And off the hands and out. Philpot is showing her versatility up front. They're not just running her in front or behind on a slide. This time on a back one, meaning it's a quick attack right behind the setter, just varying up that attack depth. Well, when the pass has been there, they've gotten their freshman middle, Philpot involved a ton in their offense. And Carr, merging player on that right side for Purdue the last couple of weeks. Yeah, Lizzie Carr's been really impressive. Already four for six tonight. Zero errors. She's trending upward, and that's why Dave Shondell is capturing this lineup. She went in at the end of their Indiana match a few weeks ago and kind of just hasn't taken her out since at the end of that match and had 10 kills in that match. And that's out. And Purdue loves the versatility they have with her because Carr has started matches at both middle and opposite this season for Purdue. Yeah, it's huge to have her on that right side because you can also run slide attacks, meaning quick attacks behind the setter, normally what a middle runs. And that versatility and this dynamic play really adds a lot to your offense. For Chacoin, buzzes that one down. We talk so much about Eva Hudson, but Chloe Chacoin has just been quietly doing well for this team. She continues to rack up kills, not in necessarily flashy ways, but she gets it done. She's so good at keeping this ball in play. Well, it's usually Terry and Hudson that decide these type of matches, Purdue and Illinois, but Chacoin and Hernandez could have a lot to say about that. There's got to be an X factor in there somewhere, and it could absolutely be either Hernandez or Chacoin. And there's Hernandez steering it out. Now that's usually been the, the positive correlation win versus loss for Illinois. 
When Hernandez goes 10 plus kills, they've won six in a row in the Big Ten. Fighting Illini. That includes that USC match. Top 20 win for the Illini recently. And Terry out. Terry just continuing to bring the heat. Looks like she wanted to touch on that ball. At least on that look, it looked over. But no challenge. And Martinez Mundo with the bump set. And there's Hernandez with a good strike. And that's such a difficult ball to swing at a system because it's coming from behind Hernandez's head. So she can't see the block in front of her and is essentially taking a blind swing at it and still managed to get the kill. Illinois hopes that's the turning point of Hernandez's night, who was hitting negatives before that swing. And she's up there playing net defense. This is exactly what Illinois needed. A little more pressure on the serve. Brooke Mosier is doing a phenomenal job serving Purdue out of system, dropping this ball right in. That forces Purdue in a tough spot, and the block is reading it really well. well Mosier put another serve in that Anderson took care of. This is a smart decision from Anderson up front, identifying that Mosier didn't come in in time, was kind of sauntering back to her spot. It's an easy put down for a setter. That's a good pull by you, sauntering. <laughs> Hold up my dictionary for that one. Sharp one for Smith. And Hudson, man. It, it hasn't been the big power tonight for Hudson. It's in the mid-tempo stuff. Yeah, she's making it look easy, just putting this ball right to middle back. Because Illinois' middle back is shifting to the right just a little bit, that opens the middle on her side. And Hudson, using her great court vision, sees that and perfectly places it. Normally, there's a defender right there, but because Illinois is shifting, it scores. Hudson up to eight kills. And Myers over to get a block touch. And sliding around for the attack. Closure for Terry out of the back row. Hornung with the set for Hudson. Martinez Mundo hangs in. Hernandez. Hudson. Terry saves it. Oh, good look at the two star outsides going head to head there. Right back to Hudson. And finally, it goes away for Hudson. Both sides laying out for some of these balls. Raina Terry on Illinois side. Diving save in the back corner just to keep this ball alive. Then Illinois side as well, McAleer doing the same thing. And here's that last kill. Purdue's just able to transition out of it. Chapoin serving for Purdue. Up by three, up 1-0 in, in the match. And Illinois back within two. And Kari Bohm. Hernandez serving for Illinois. Well, there's the power from Hudson. Up against a speaker. Terry makes the read on it. And stayed on their side, so it's playable. And Myers. Hold on now. What do we got? Oh, we're going to replay the point. That's tough. Whistle blown just a little bit too soon. Fantastic up on Illinois' side. Now the inadvertent whistle leads to the replay of the point. And on two to the back corner. More crafts for Anderson. Anderson's doing a really nice job making herself known as a threat up front. Every time she's up there, it seems like we're getting at least one attempt from her, and in different ways, shoving it down to the middle, going for the back corner, being aggressive up there. And then she'll just kind of stoically smile at her teammates that come over to celebrate. Never too much emotion from Anderson. Hudson cross court. That's out. Hudson definitely going for fingertips on that one. Try to hit the back corner, just missing a little bit over the block. She wasn't happy with herself there either. Shaking her head a little bit. I mean, that's a mistake that you're okay with because she's essentially going up and over the blockers. Right. Doesn't happen too often. 
coin roll. If it wasn't Smith, it was Martinez Mundo. With Hernandez into the net. This is where Illinois has to make a change and try to just get some offense going. Even in tough, chaotic situations, someone has to go up and take a strong swing because you can't let Purdue go up by more than this. Well, Mosier back to the middle with Bill Pot. It was sealed off. Such a good read on Purdue's side. Both Carr and Colvin working together on this gap set. It's right between them, but they dove their hands back inside. It's such a difference. But for Purdue and Illinois right now, Illinois is pretty much in at this point. They'd have to potentially lose out, and even if they did, it wouldn't matter. They would likely still be in. For Purdue, they're trying to host for the NCAA tournament, being a top 16 seed, meaning they'll host for the first two rounds. You know, Terry with a big rip out of the timeout. Illinois within three. The Purdue, you said it, they, they don't have a bad loss, and yeah. you know, they've, they've taken care of all the unranked teams that they've played. They've also beaten Kentucky and Utah out of conference. Yes, yeah, so you look at that number 20 in RPI, you say, okay, well, that's well out of the 16 range, but they have great wins, and the biggest thing is all of their losses are to great teams in front of them. And that is down for Lizzie Carr. And, and I would bet, Emily, that the committee will Look at the match they played on the road at Lincoln where they pushed Nebraska yeah. to five. We're basically in control the entire time yep. right up until the end of that fifth set as well. Again, great losses on their side. You got to win over Kentucky, Minnesota, Utah, who's in the top 15 of RPI as well. So you're great with those numbers. To me, they look easily into the top 16 as long as they continue to keep doing work at the end of the season. But they've got a tough stretch ahead. Yeah. Interesting, right, because the RPI is 20 for Purdue, but the, the ranking is 8. Yeah. Mosier loads it up for Terry. Illinois is going to continue to get Raina Terry going when they're looking to claw their way back in this set. They're going to rely on their go-to attacker. That is always Raina Terry, whether she's in the front or the back court. Two massive swings for Terry out of the timeout. She's up to nine kills, tying with Hudson for the match high. Colvin getting up. Barry with good work on defense. Hernandez into the net, fished out after Hudson dug it. Bill Pot slide. Hudson another dig. Coyne stuttered the feet and still scored it. Clover Shikoyne has been exploiting the middle of the court for Illinois all night long, scoring a lot of times on this off-speed, either roll shot or tip, right in the middle of all of them. It's been balanced around Hudson. She's been the, the clear leader, as she has been most of the year for Purdue, but Carr, Shikoyne, Colvin, all with four-plus kills for the Boilermaker. On to Mosher. Gets creative. Really smart decision for Mosier. She hasn't had too many balls that she's taken over on two. This was a perfect time to do it. A tight pass just goes right inside the block. With that attacker's mind that she has. Second year as the full-time setter for Illinois. That's your coin down the line. Great vision from Chloe Shacoin up front. This ball is pushed all the way out to the antenna. That allows the line shot to happen. Blockers are too far inside. Shacoin rips it right down the line. Shacoin efficient. Already has nine digs. Double-double machine. Double-double machine. And that's out. Purdue extends it by four. Yeah. Shaquan last couple matches has been super efficient. She had 16 kills hitting over 500 in their last win. She's at 444 tonight with that hitting number. And it's a one-two punch on Purdue's side. Okay, maybe Eva Hudson goes to the backcourt. You still got to worry about Shaquan up front. That serve from McAleer into the net. Well, midway through the second set, she already has as many digs as she had that entire match against Rutgers. Chloe Shacoin. Well, 
Martinez Mundo underneath Hernandez with the left and it zigzags through that Purdue defense. Illinois starting to get back in this set, playing a lot craftier, trying to exploit open holes on Purdue's side. Really good up by Martinez Mundo just getting that ball over. Just a little bit of chaos happening on Purdue's side. I've always wondered if that Illinois celebration makes them dizzy. It made me dizzy watching it, so. The, the snow globe yeah. the celebration. <laughs> Lourdes Myers rises up for her third kill of the night. This is where Purdue has to keep the pedal on the metal, keep that offense balanced, and continue to keep taking big swings against Illinois. A little bit of something from all the hitters so far for Purdue. Good spread for Anderson, their setter. Moser working hard to get to that ball. Smith off balance, taking a cut. Moser right back to Smith. Offense and defense for Lourdes Myers. Purdue's block has been outstanding all night. Already their eighth block of just this match. We're not. As the captain of the offense for Purdue. They're trying to take a 2 0 lead up by four after they took set one. Hernandez off the net. And Hudson, one arm, saved it. That's a three point set. Hudson has just been sacrificing her body left and right to make plays. She ran into the scores table earlier, this time going into the stands to try to make a play. I mean, this girl has no quit. And courteous to the fans, yeah. too. No pain, and she's right back to her happy place up at the net. Yeah, not as courteous to Illinois, just hammering balls left and right. She has taken her play to the next level, and you can see it, that look in her eye. I mean, it is go time. Ten kills for Hudson already. And what is really an inevitability every single night that Hudson is going to give you a big number in the kill count. Kari Bohm. It's always a bonus for Illinois when their defense first middle can give them something on the attack. Yeah, normally... Chris Thomas talks about how he recruits middle blockers, not middle hitters, and Bohm has been a perfect example of that. She's a great blocker, but they've really worked to develop her offensive game. She was efficient when they beat USC, hit 800 that night. Also had a perfect night against Iowa recently. Well, Purdue extends it. Oh, no, that's out. That's out. Colvin steers it out, back to two points. Martinez Mundo with the service. Anderson out to Hudson, and the reliable outside does it again. When Purdue is tight or trying to close the setup, they'll often go to their go-to attacker, which is Eva Hudson. In these situations, you have to expect the ball, even on good passes, is going to her because she's almost sure for a point. Her and Chicoin. Both hitting over 300 on the outside. She coins it 400, and the block shows up for Carr on Terry. A huge moment for Carr to get that block because they knew that Illinois was going to go to Raina Terry, their go-to attacker, trying to claw their way back in the set. A really good finish from Carr up front. Purdue trying to win their 16th set in their last 17 play. They have been dominant since their last loss, winning six matches in a row, hoping for seven tonight. Hudson rattles the block. Set point, Boilermakers. Hudson just making it look easy up front, picking apart blocks on her side, even when they're well formed against her. Going through it. A 3 0 scoring run for Purdue to get here. And Phil Pot almost kept this set alive. Second chance at it with Terry. Hornung is underneath it. But back to the Illini. There he is, second shot at it. Hudson on set point. There he is, third swing on this point. It's the charm. Expect every ball to continue to go to Rana Terry up front. She is their go-to attacker. She's got the hot hand. 
already 11 kills on the night, and they're looked to her in these big moments as their leader. She's had some big runs individually throughout her career. This would be right near the top of the list if she can bring Illinois back, facing several set points. And Hudson puts an end to that. Just a scintillating night. Fans. I'm trying to remember the number of continents that were represented when we were at volleyball in Nebraska last year. I think, I think every, I don't know about Antarctica. At least but. five. Five to six. Five to six. <laughs> well, Purdue with a loud start to the third set with Eva Hudson. 14 kills for Hudson in this match. Illinois has to find a way to shut down or at least slow down Eva Hudson because she is not going anywhere. And when she gets that hot hand and that mentality to go for it every time, it becomes scary. Chloe Chacoin's had a good night as well. So has Raina Terry, but that one a little bit outside for Terry, who has 11 kills through two sets. Illinois loves to rely on Terry in these big moments. Again, backs against the wall for Illinois. This is a must-win set, but they still have to find a way to spread out that offense and keep it balanced because they've become way too reliant on Terry. When it's Purdue, Illinois, it's usually about which outside takes over the match. We're going right back to Terry. Illinois hopes that's the start to the climb back, down two sets to none. It has been so close between Terry and Hudson. They're playing deep matches, their production in these matches, and you never know which swing it could be that determines it. You know, it's Lourdes Myers giving some help to Hudson here. Good adjustment from Lourdes Myers on this swing. It wasn't in the perfect spot for her to go up and take a good swing on, but she adjusted that arm swing mid-air and just put it right off the block. Allie Hornung with the service. Martinez Mundo takes the second one, and Terry rips it. Purdue's putting up a triple block up against Randa Terry, putting in three blockers up there. That's six hands, and she's still barreling it inside. And whether it's Martinez Mundo or Mosier, their traditional setter, there's no secret where the ball's going. No, they know where it's going, and they still can't stop her. Terry playing net defense there, but that was a rocket from Colvin. Colvin looks like she's been getting stronger as the season's gone on. She's hitting with just a little bit more oomph, and when that ball's in a perfect spot, especially in a one-on-one, -on -one, you gotta look the other way. It's coming fast. I'm telling you, pogo stick. Get out of here. <laughs> Big leap from Colvin. Mosier to the back corner. Smart shot from Brooke, Mo Brooke Mosier going above the head of the libero in the backcourt. This is what makes a good dump when you're trying to send it deep. Doesn't get the first one, sneaky second one. And four kills on the night for Mosier, the setter for the Illini. Sutton through a double block. Terry overhead. Hernandez shut down. Carr and Colvin. And a switch block for Carr and Colvin. Again, Lizzie Carr, she lines up as a right side, but she's 6'6", six, six, and she's played middle before in this rotation. Colvin had run on a slide, so they switched blocking positions and still got it done. Mosier again on second contact, and Anderson saves the point for Purdue. Hernandez keeps it inside the antenna. Well, Barry gets up. Martinez Mundo with the hustle. Well, Hudson wasn't exactly sure what to do, and she can't believe that that was ruled out. And Purdue only has one challenge left. Do they burn it right now? Well, Chandel, Chandel's thinking about he it. He grabs for it. He's going to say play on, I guess. I mean, that was so close. That was so in. Oh, and the crowd talked him into it. The crowd talked Dave Shondell into raising the challenge card. Oh, that was that was some fun showmanship. And 
they, they might win that based on the that angle. They was should out. win that Purdue based on that angle. challenging that the ball was in. <laughs> Dave, Dave Shondell, he, he pump faked, and he kind of froze in walking position, walked away, and then the crowd was like, no! And then he goes back and grabs it. Again, Purdue only has one challenge left, so is, is that worth burning it on this one? And when you have this good of a crowd around you that tells you it's in, I mean, feels like you got to challenge it. You got to trust your fans, not just your players. That one's a little bit tougher to tell. This was it looked like the best angle that we had. That's in. Oh, that's maybe not in. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's in, unless it's not. Which makes me think it could stand, because you you think, but we don't know. You have to have conclusive evidence to either overturn or confirm the call based on the looks that we see. I think it's in question mark. I'm going mark. stands. Okay. I'm going stands. You know what? I'm going to say it's in. I don't feel strong about that. Okay. Yeah, because that, that high angle, it's hard to tell. After the, the review, the ball was in. Purdue will retain their challenge and will be awarded the point. And Emily's 1-0. I'm 0-2. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was great theater from Dave Shondell. Playing to that group of fans especially. Yeah, you got to trust your fans. You can trust your players all you want. Here's the pump fake. Uh, do I do it? Ah, uh, no. Okay. All right. Give the people what they want. <laughs> Peer great. pressure works even on the venerable Dave Shondell. <laughs> Mosier out for Phil Potten. Horna comes flying in there. Back out for Phil Potten. Another block. What a read from Raven Colvin and Chloe Shacoin up front. The outside takes this ball, meaning one of the only options that they have is this slide on a good pass. Phil Potten runs it. That block's just in a better position. It is 10-4. Make it 11 for Purdue in blocking tonight. And Terry into the tape. Purdue is up five, looking for a sweep in this third set. There is no room for error right now for Illinois. They have to play as clean as possible from here on out. Backs against the wall, down 2-0 in this match. This is a must-win set. The Illini hitting 106 as a team to Purdue's 364. And Terry reloads it for Hernandez. And Shaquoin gets down. Carr pumps it for another kill. Sixth for Lizzie Carr. Carr's been so impressive on that right side. Really has stepped up for this Purdue team, and they needed just a little bit more production there. She started the last few matches and has been outstanding. Well, we've seen that for several years running now with Purdue, where they'll rotate those opposites in the given matchups. Who's hot? Right now, it's Lizzie Carr hitting over 600 in the match. Martinez Mundo with the dig. And Terry gets one back for Illinois. Much better adjustment on that back row swing from Terry. The one before she missed in the bottom of the net, this time swings higher with it and takes it to an angle. With a one on one block, she has both options available, but a good take right inside. Remember, when it's Terry against Hudson, it's usually the player with more kills that wins the match. Hudson 15, Terry 14. But 2 nothing Purdue with some support for Carr with seven kills. It hasn't just been the Eva Hudson show. Taylor Anderson is running a very balanced offense, making sure to get everyone involved. And Carr is the second leading attacker. Seven out of 10. And Shaquin and Colvin both with five. Well, Mosier in Illinois still looking for that consistent second option in this match. Could it be Hernandez? That would be a good start for Illinois. It's her fifth kill of the night. 
Ten Illinois needs just a little bit more production from everyone else that isn't Reina Terry. That's a good place to start for Avery Hernandez. Before that swing, Brooke Mosier, the setter, was their second leading attacker. So can they get Smith going on the right? Can they get the middles going a little bit? Chacoin, big swing. Martinez Mundo hangs in there. And Myers leaves no doubt. Just a confident swing through the middle for Purdue. They need a little bit more of that, getting the middles involved. Anderson's done a really nice job in perfect pass situations of getting them involved and keeping them involved throughout the match. For Myers, it's a five kill, four block night. Hernandez, that block for Purdue, impossible to penetrate. They have been phenomenal all night long, reading across the net so well. Both middles, Lord, and limit her ability to keep involved, but man, they've been phenomenal. And the serving turns up with McAleer on the ace. Did you just hiccup? <laughs> I didn't want to cry out, but. Did I not press my, top, my cough button? <laughs> Excuse me. And that's what you get here. We're always live. Excuse me. <laughs> I, I need the boiler block to, uh, to to spook me to get rid of the he hiccups. This got so exciting. All right. I, I guess it was just one hiccup. I'm good. <laughs> cool. Reel it in, Eamon. <laughs> oh, excuse me. There's, there's, there's Myers. Slamming one down for Purdue. Taylor Anderson continuing to keep everyone involved in this. And if you're Illinois, again, no room for error. You have to play as clean as possible. That starts with a good pass right now. You have to nail this one. And Terry puts it away. 15 kills, matches Hudson's 15. That's a huge play that Illinois needed. Nailing that pass, getting Terry going on a quick set, putting it down. They need to find a little bit more offensive production. And Terry coming back for this final season. She, she could have gone pro as Martinez Mundo into the tape. Could have gone pro, could have started other professional pursuits, but I think she's going to play it for a long time, don't you? She's so much fun to watch. She's so fiery. She takes charge of that backcourt. She's really well-rounded, too. She's got great hands for her second balls. Free chance at it for the Boilermakers. And Colvin has had a really nice night. Blocking and swinging. Six kills, six blocks. And Colvin's just been unloading on these swings. The ball's been in the perfect place for her to do so, and she is not leaving. Any room for question marks. Mosier with the back set for Smith. Hornung was waiting for it. Hudson over the top. Smith gets a piece. Colvin tip. And two come crashing in. Martinez, Mundo, and Smith. And back to the ground at a 10-point lead. And all of a sudden, Purdue has just extended this lead time and time again. The defense is doing work on their side, not only getting it up, but putting it in a great position to keep all hitters involved. Emily, what will be the biggest factor on whether or not Purdue is a first weekend team or a second weekend and beyond team in the tournament? Well, the biggest thing for Purdue right now is finding ways to click and be consistent with that. We've seen the highs of the highs. Again, that five-set loss in Nebraska is one of the best matches that we've seen Purdue play all season long. But they have to continue to do that consistently. The way that Purdue is trending right now as well, they've won their last 16 of 17 sets. They've continued to keep pressure on teams both from the service line and on attack. And that defense has continued to get better and better as the season's gone on. The biggest key is doing that consistently through two matches. Well, and maybe here as much as any other place, if they can play at home, it's a tough place to get used to coming in for a first weekend of the NCAA tournament. That's a huge advantage for whichever teams come in. And this is a Purdue team that's not only trying to make it through, 
the first weekend, but make it through that second weekend and reach their first Final Four. Purdue rolling up 19-8. That Big Ten race, we will give you the full picture here in a moment. But Purdue in fourth place right now. Looking like number six in the country tonight. Good response out of the timeout with Phil Pop. So coming down to the final five matches or four matches of the year, depending on who you are. Nebraska 16-0, Penn State one back with Wisconsin still a shot to grab the title. You know what I love about the Big Ten schedule is it almost always comes down to that last weekend. We have Nebraska playing at Penn State on next Friday. So it is going to be an epic battle for potentially who could win that Big Ten title. That could determine it. Holden into the net. Yeah, it's great to have the head-to-head -head because it's it's not a situation where all three teams have to just win out and get help or anything like that. It's decided on the court yeah. in the final couple of weeks. And Nebraska right now in control of their own destiny. They could easily potentially win out. Carr sends it out. And Illini with a little burst out of this timeout. They're trailing by 11, have it back to 8. This is where Illinois could learn a lot about their team. Backs against the wall, down eight in this set. Must win set to continue this match on. Can they continue to fight? Final match of this really tough five match set for Illinois. Two and two coming into this one, including the top 20 win against USC. Moser on the run, setting Hernandez and Chacoin with another slick dig in the back. Point makes the call on this one. She can dig, she can bump set. And Hudson helps her out. Perfect ball from Chloe Shacoin in the backcourt, setting up Hudson beautifully. And Hudson identifies the block in front of her. Great transition play, getting her feet to the ball and going for that line shot. Well, Hudson with 17 kills. Most in this match. Brings it back. Barry steps in front in the defense for Illinois. Hands on, block touch Colvin. And Terry had Colvin leaning up there at the net. Illinois just has to continue to chip away at that lead, play as clean as possible, and take big swings because tips are not going to come back in this match. You said tips? Tips are not going to. Like Bears Packers? Get out of here. I was waiting for that one. I was hoping he was never going to come. There's Colvin. That's not a tip. Slam time. So annoying. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming from a Bears fan to a Packers fan. Get out of here. Which one is which? I'm sure you can guess at home. From my dejected voice, I'm sure you know exactly which one is which. Boehm is shut down. Mortis Myers has Purdue three points away. 13 blocks on the match from Purdue already. They are doing a phenomenal job identifying where this ball is going in a solo stop for Myers on this one, reading it beautifully. And then just nonchalantly celebrating. The 13th block of the night for Purdue. Does Illinois have a late surge? And Terry with her 17th of the night to match Hudson with 17. Just going blow for blow right now. A bunch of heavyweights fighting out. See Terry talking to the front court. Hey, let's go. We're not done. Martinez Mundo underneath it. Hernandez. Porno. Stationary to set. Martinez Mundo, another rangy play. And down in the donut. Avery Hernandez for the Illini. If Illinois is going to come back, they can't just rely on Rana Terry. They have to continue to spread this offense out, and everyone else has to be just as terminal. Great shot from Hernandez. Six kills, six dig night for Hernandez. Hot 
Watson out. That's a 3-0 Illinois run. That's just Eva Hudson's third error of this entire match. She was hitting over 400 up until that point. So those are the errors that you're okay with barely missing the sideline. And that was inches. Tip for Woolard. Kenna Woolard, Illinois native in there against her home state team. And Illinois on a run here, four in a row. They've got it to six in this third set. Illinois has to continue to have that quick, fast memory, fast mentality, continue to have that fight and grit in the backcourt. This is what a tournament teams do. You might be down, but you have to find a way to battle back. And it's come with Reagan Riley at the service line. And serving Woolard. Hudson has to push. So they have five in a row. The back set, four card to end the run. If Purdue wants to stay in contention for hosting through the first two rounds of the NCAA tournament, they need to assert their dominance. That's exactly what they're doing tonight against a very good Illinois team and a good offense in Illinois. They're finding ways to slow them down and transitioning that beautifully. trying to bring up a match point. Right, call up at the net. That's a point for the Illini on the net call against Purdue. So Avery Hernandez will try to go on a nice extended run here. Trying to bring Illinois back from what was once an 11-point Purdue lead in this set. Smith, Hudson, ranging left and right. Wollard with a kill against her home state team. The Dunlap, Illinois native, brings up match point. And it will be Wollard that gives way for Shacoin to serve. Raina Terry has one more for the road at least. Illinois just needs to continue to chip away at that lead and expect them to keep giving Terry the ball. Most of any hitter in this match, 18 kills for Terry. And Illinois needs six more to draw even. Looking for the sweep, and it'll have to wait at least one more point. Match point three coming up. Well, Illinois could have shut this thing down. They were down 11 at 19-8. Clawed back to five. But a third match point for Purdue. It's Hudson. And that is that for Purdue. They sweep the match win their seventh in a row and are now 22 and five on the year.
ஆண்டே இருக்கா இப்போ காயினு இல்லை எங்கேயாவது போய் ஒரு இரநூறு காயின் மட்டும் எடுத்துருவாடியா காசை மிச்சம் பண்ணுங்கயா காசை மிச்சம் பண்ணுங்கயா பத்தல பத்தல குடியும் பத்தல 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 பத்தாரே அப்ப காட்டி உள்ளது பத்துல <laughs> நல்லா பண்ற பண்ண ஆ வேற அவனை தரதே பெருசு வாரான் 